We thank God for all of you, the people of God who have joined us this morning, those in the sanctuary and those in the cypress sanctuary. God is just good. And if you know the Lord is good, you ought to tell somebody, you ought to type to somebody, the Lord is good. Somebody must have forgot about it. Somebody thought they've been through so much this year that it changed the goodness of God. But can I tell you, the fact that you are alive to watch me today means that the Lord has been good because he put all of the breath in your body while the Bible says let everything that has breath praise the Lord. How many of y'all know breath is a blessing? Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you Main Street family, Main Street friends for joining us this morning. All of you who consistently come in and worship with us. Uh, we want to know where you're worshiping from. We want to make sure that the reach that God has given us, that we are absolutely uh, maximizing what God has given us to use this, leverage this technology and the reach that he's given us to reach the masses. So let us know where you are watching from uh, this morning. But I want you to stay in the mode of worship today because we made it, y'all. Yeah. Some of them that started off with us at the beginning of the year are not here with us now, but we made it to the end of the year. We got a few more days, but the Lord has worked wonderful works in our lives, and we are grateful and we are thankful. I thank God for this music ministry. I thank God for our audio technician. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for Minister Leroy Hurd for reading that scripture and praying us all the way into the heavenlies. It just feels good, and I'm, I'll be so glad when we all come back together. Everybody talking about when we all see Jesus, but I'm talking about when I see all the saints. <laughs> I ain't going to have to shout when we see Jesus. That's going to happen too, but I'm ready for all the saints to come back for us to shout. Amen. To my own wife, Lady Jessica Clay, God bless you. Thank God for you and your love and your ministry to me. But there is a word from the Lord this morning. Uh, we've made it all the way to this Sunday, to the end of the year. And as much as I want it, y'all to just run and shout and all that good stuff because I feel like you know this, this is the perfect time to preach crossover stuff but uh, God had a different plan so y'all just pray with me pray for me um, because we're going to share with you what the Lord has given us today we're just going to obey God as we do every week uh, but sometimes I feel like sometimes have, do you ever just want to shout just want to shout and the Lord said no stop shouting and listen to what I got to say so I'm, thank, I'm thankful that we done shouted. Amen. Let's go in our Bibles to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. All right. The book of Jonah, chapter 1. And we want to keep our Bibles open because we have, we're going to maneuver through a couple of verses in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Um, but there's some things strategically that we want to lift from this text um, that would help us for where we are. And if you are looking <clears throat> for the book of Jonah and you're struggling to find it, use your table of contents. Don't, that little <laughs> Don't be sitting there looking in Psalm somewhere, acting like you got it. No, go ahead and go to that table of contents. In my Bible, it's on page 977. Now, that ain't going to help you at all, but it'll get you close. It's after Obadiah and before Michael. <laughs> go turn in your Bibles. We're going to get some, some practice here today searching these scriptures. Jonah chapter 1. In the first chapter of the book of Jonah, we're going to read verses 4 through 10. And then we're going to skip down to chapter 2, read verses 1 through 10. Uh, but we're going to move through these verses um, here, and then we're going to find a place to drop anchor. When you have it, would you say amen? amen? Here's what the Bible says, Jonah chapter 1, verse 4. It says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. Lord have mercy. So the ship master came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Rise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said, every one to his fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, that the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, 
For whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation and whence comest thou? What is thy country and of what people art thou? Verse 9. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord God of heaven, which hath made the sea and dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Now scoop, skip down to chapter 2, verse 1. Real quick, chapter 2, verse number 1. We're going to read the first few verses there. And this is what the Bible says. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the, belly, the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Skip down to verse number 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. May the Lord and a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Uh, for the next few moments, uh, we're going to tag this text, Are You Rescue Ready? Are you rescue ready? Uh -huh. I just want y'all to pray for me. I want y'all to pray for me. And we're going to get there together. But I want you to ask somebody around you. I need you to put that in the comment section. I need you to text that to somebody. Are you rescue ready? Um, as we embark on the year 2020, on this the last Sunday, then we embark on the year 2021 in this last Sunday of the year 2020. We can all attest that 2020 has been won for the record books. 2020 has literally leveled the playing field for many of us. Because no matter who you are and where you're from, no matter who you look like, no matter what you have or what you do not have, all of us have lost something, someone or have had to deal with something breathtaking this year. And even now, somebody who's listening to me, you find yourself in something right now that you need God to get you out of. But here's what the Lord told me to ask you. He says, you are in the situation now, but are you asking the right questions? Are you asking God when? am I going to come out? Or are you asking God, what am I supposed to get out of what I am in? God says, I know that you want to get out of it. I know that you want it all to be over. He says, I know that you want to be rescued, but the question is, are you rescue ready? Listen, we ain't going to be here long at all. I need y'all to help me. In other words, God said this to me and I had to take a deep breath in order to to, to come to you with it. But this is what he said. He says, in other words, he says, some things that have happened in your life, the devil didn't do it. He says, there are some storms uh -huh, that the devil did not send. You have done some crying and the devil didn't cause it. But God says, since I have big plans for your life, there are some things that I have orchestrated and some other things that I have allowed to get some stuff in you for where you're going and to get some stuff out of you before you get to where you are going. And here's the picture that God showed me. I saw a photograph, y'all, in a dark room. And I didn't understand the process well, so I went back there and I started looking at the, what the process of, of developing a photo. And what I found out, y'all, is that the photo has to be in a room that's completely void of light. It has to be in a room, y'all, that is completely dark because if the developer exposes it to the light too soon, the image that's on the photo will be distorted. And so the, the, the developer has to leave the image in the dark until he can see the image that he put in it in the first place. And God says, because I'm trying to develop my image in you, I can't bring you out too soon because if I bring you out too soon, it will distort the image that I'm trying to show in your life. But here's what really messed me up, y'all. When I started looking at the process, 
I looked at and found out, that, and I asked Lady Jess, I said, can you tell me how this process works? She said, no, look it up. That's, a, that's an amazing wife. I'm not going to give you no fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish. So when I started looking at it, this is what I saw, y'all, and it just blessed my socks off. When I looked at the process of developing a photo, I found out, y'all, that the original image that the photographer uses to develop the larger image that they really want to see comes from a little small strip called a negative. Lord have mercy. In other words, the photographer takes the negative and he uses the negative to develop an image that's bigger and brighter, but it's developed in the dark. I just come to tell somebody that Paul tried to help us out in the first place. He said this, and we know, come on somebody, that all things work together. And I need you to tell your neighbor that whatever you're going through, it's working together. It's working together, the good and the bad. It's working together. The ups and the downs, they're working together. When I'm prosperous and when I am poor, it's our working together and I come to tell somebody that everybody wants to be rescued but the question is are you rescue ready ah uh, we almost where we need to be we almost there Lord y'all helping me already look look at this now now this text that we've read into you here and we've we've preached from this text before uh, but and there's so many things in the text that every time you read it it's just so much that the Lord can give you out of it but one of the things about this text, uh, that would, should catch your attention is that there's a lot of scrutiny around the story of Jonah. Because there are many people who seek to delegitimize the story, thus with the mindset of getting rid of the principles that are in the text. And, and there are some who argue uh, what species of fish could have possibly swallowed an entire man. Y'all know folks like this, they're just always trying to prove something wrong. They're just hush. Yeah. What, what kind of fish can possibly swallow an entire man? How, how was Jonah consumed by this fish, went down into the stomach of the fish, and the acid in the fish's stomach not devour him? That there are those who say, well, if, 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 this is, if he really went down the, the, the throat of this fish, how did he go down this fish's throat and the fish's esophagus not crush him on the way down? Then, then there are others who say, well, if he was in this fish all of this time how was he able to stay in the belly of this fish with no oxygen and didn't suffocate but while many people have placed their attention on the fish they have missed the forest for the trees here it is because this story is not about a gigantic fish that swallowed a man but about a gracious God who gave another chance I need some help it's about a man uh, who has who has a calling on his life and has to make a decision between conviction and comfort. It's a man who has a calling on his life who has to make a decision between pleasure and purpose, between obedience and disobedience. It's about a man who gets another opportunity from God to do the second time what he did not do the first time. This story is about a man redeeming the time and God giving him back what he thought he lost gave him another opportunity to do it better the second time. It is a story of the grace and the goodness of God. But when we examine the story of Jonah, there are at least three ways that the text helps us to determine how God knows whether or not we are rescue ready. And here it is, here it is, three things and we're going to get out of your way. God says, I know when you're rescue ready, when you are willing to acknowledge, point number one, when you are the problem. All right. I told you I wanted to shout. All right. Yeah. He's, God knows when you are rescue ready. He knows when I'm rescue ready. When we are willing, point number one, to acknowledge when you are the problem. Here it is. Verse, verse number 10. It says, then when the men were exceedingly afraid and said unto him. Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them. Now, now I want you to see this. Here, here are some sailors that are on the ship. They are in the middle of a life-threatening storm. But here are men who are not spiritual. They are not preachers and they are not prophets. But when they look at the magnitude of this storm... 
They say, this ain't normal. This, this ain't normal. It's, it's something else going on here. The, the, these are experienced sailors. They have been through storms before, but they ain't never been through anything like this. Here's what they're saying. They say, we've been in trouble before, but nothing like this. We, we've been in distress before, but nothing like this. We've been in danger before, but nothing like this. We've seen death before, but nothing like this. We've seen sickness before. We've seen calamity before, but nothing like this. We've seen racism and political issues before, but nothing like this. Here are these men who are not spiritual, but they're able to look at the severity of the storm and say, this storm ain't normal. This is an act of God. And, he, and here's what theologians tell us about the storm. They tell us that this was not just a storm, but it was literally a series of storms happening all at the same time. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to wrap up your 2020 for you. The storm that they encounter is not just a storm. It is a series of storms happening at the same time. Theologians attest that the wind was blowing from the north, the south, the east, and the west at the same time. The water was swelling. The waves were crashing against the ship with such force that the text says that the boat begins to fall apart. Maybe the ship could have survived one storm, but it was the multiple storms, Lord have mercy, back to back to back to back. It was the series of storms that were happening back to back that they are now struggling in the water. But, but here's what I want you to see, and I just saw this when I was reading it. But when the men in the boat who are not spiritual, they begin to cry out to their God. Look at verse 5. It says, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. Y'all see that? But when you go down to verse 6, it says, The shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. Now God is used in verse 5. Come on, somebody. And it's also used in verse 6. But there is a difference. Because in verse 5, they call upon their God, small g. Lord have mercy. But when you look at verse 6, here's a man who is not a saint, not a preacher, and not a prophet. But when he refers to Jonah's God, he uses the capital G. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. That even though people may not believe in your God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. God has a way of letting them know who's God, small G, Lord have mercy. And who's God, capital G, he's the God of every nation. Bless his holy name. Yeah, this is what I need you to see. I need you to see. I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere. Uh, some of us, we're we struggling this year because this has not just been a storm. It's been a series of storms, and they've been happening at the same time. So at the same time, you had health challenges and money issues. At the same time, you've had relationship problems and trouble on your job. You've realized this year that you got some fake friends and some real enemies. In this year, yeah, this year, this has not just been a storm, it's been a series of storms. But here's what I want to tell you. I came to help somebody that you ought to be glad that you have the testimony that David had because David said my foot almost slipped. Yeah, my foot almost slipped. I almost gave up. I almost lost it all. I almost quit. But when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And the reason we all are here right now is because the Lord kept us capital G. And I need somebody who knows who the capital G God is to lift up your hand and open up your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to get to where I need to be. Uh-huh. Yeah, I almost gave it up. It almost took me out. But he was holding me, covering me, and keeping me. And when I wanted to quit, the Lord wouldn't let me fall. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh-huh. But I got to show you something. I got to show you something. It's in the text. When the men assessed the storm, y'all, they came to the conclusion, yeah, we done seen some storms, but we ain't never seen nothing like this. And they accurately assessed that this is an act of God. Even in the insurance industry, I was talking to a friend of mine. He said, yeah, in the insurance industry, there are certain things that insurance don't cover. You got to be sure that you ask the right questions because there's such a thing as an act of God. 
And an act of God means this. It ain't nothing you could have done to stop it. All you got to do is weather the storm, wait till it's over, and start putting the pieces back together again. And the Lord told me to tell you that there have been some things that have transpired in life that are simply acts of God. He says, but it wasn't directly, directly towards you. He says, but it was some stuff around you I was trying to get a hold of. He says, so you were in the middle of something that wasn't designed for you. It's in the text, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Look, look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. I want to get ahead of myself. Look what it says. Then the mariners uh -huh, were afraid. I bet you were. And cried unto his God, small g. Here it is. These, these mariners are, I told you, they're not spiritual men. They, these are carnal men. But when they got in the storm, they got real spiritual. Look at that. <laughs> Father, I stretch my hands toward them. They ain't even, they don't even know what it is in the Bible. They mixing up all kind of stuff. <laughs> all kind of scriptures ain't going together. Ain't prayed all year long. But when the COVID hit, mm -hmm, now you can call on this wonderful matchless name. Yeah, these are carnal men, but when they got in this storm that wasn't normal, they got real spiritual. And there's and some folks who say right now that they don't believe in God, but since COVID came, they praying now. Yeah, it's some folks you done invited to church all year long. I don't believe in that church stuff, but oh, but now, they can't wait for the doors to swing open so they can come up in here. It's some folks that told you that they did not believe in Jesus. Now they texting you stuff to tell Jesus when you talk to them. In reality, here's what I'm trying to tell you. That there are carnal people who become spiritual when they get in storms. Let me, let me, let me show you this. These storms made these men start seeking spiritual solutions. I want you to see God in everything we're going through. In other words, everything that they knew failed and they begin to look for someone who could do what no other power could do uh-huh they, they they did not know the god of jonah personally but they knew him enough to say that your god is the real god so when we praying to some gods but we need you to pray to the real god because your god can deliver us Here's what I need you to know. That whatever you're going through, whatever you are suffering in, you know the real God and he'll come through for you if you call on him. I just need somebody to open up your mouth and call his name. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, he'll come if you call him. I'm trying to tell you, he'll come if you call him. Now, now, now look at this, look at this. Here's what I got to get to you. Now, if this had been me, y'all, and I'm in the storm of a lifetime, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to start repenting. Lord, listen. I don't know what I did, who I did it to. So I'm going to get real deep. Lord, I, I pray that you forgive me for all of my sins of commission and omission. I don't know what I did or done did. But Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to repent because I don't know how this is going to turn out. There may be some stuff I missed somewhere. Yeah, if I ain't going to make it out of this storm, I need to make sure <laughs> that I'm going to glory and not the other place. You hear what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I would have started repenting. But when you look at the text, you never see anywhere in this text where the sailors on the ship start repenting. Just, just read the entirety of it. You never see them say, Lord, we're sorry. Lord, forgive us of our sins. But here's why you don't see it. Because the reason, y'all, they don't repent is because in the text they didn't do nothing wrong. Okay. All right. Come on. I got you right where I want you right there. I got you. Here's what I'm trying to say. I told you I was going to show you. They didn't repent in the text because they didn't do, do anything wrong. Here it is. The storm was not intended for them. It was intended for Jonah. All right. All right. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. So they were in the storm not because God was mad at them. But they were in a storm because they were harboring a fugitive. Lord, I, Lord help me. Lord, help me. And, and somebody listening to me right now, the storm you are in may not have been searched for you, had not been set for you. It may not have been because of something you did, but it very well might be because you are harboring a fugitive. They, they won't surrender to God, but you keep coming to their rescue, you harboring a fugitive. They won't tithe, they won't give, but when they broke, you keep giving them money, you harboring a fugitive. 
They refuse to submit to the will of God for their lives, but you keep bailing them out. You are harboring a fugitive. And so the storm you are in may not be intended for you, but it might be intended for somebody who's on your ship. You need to do an inventory of your circle because somebody in your circle might be sinking your ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you. We're going into 2021 clear and free. Who is it that's on your boat that does not believe? Who is it that's on the ship next to you that's causing the storm in your life? Who is it that's running from God that has you harboring a fugitive? Here's what I'm trying to tell you, that the person that you may be harboring is the old you. The one sitting in your seat may be running from God. And God says, yeah, I'm trying to get away from the old you and get to the new you. You harboring a fugitive. Release them and let them go. I need somebody to help me. I need you to do an assessment today of your, of your own self. But here's what I want to show you. It's in the C part of verse 10 because we got to move. I've been here too long already. When you look at the C part of verse 10, Jonah finally acknowledges that he's the problem. Because if you look at it, look what the verse says, verse 10. It says, they said, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Here it is. Because he had told them. So, so in other words, after letting the men struggle in the storm for this entire season, John finally admits, I'm the problem. And the reason we're in this storm we are in is because I'm running from God. <laughs> now, here's what really messed me up. Now, they're in the storm struggling, but the shipmaster got to go down and wake him up. They struggling, but he sleep. They, they, they going through it, but he getting a good nice rest. I need somebody. I got to free somebody before 2021. You are trying to help somebody who is in opposition to God. They sleeping and you struggling. So there are some folks you need to put in the hand of the Lord and leave them right there. Pray and release them. Talk to God and release it. Give it to the Lord and release them. God says, it's easy for you to blame other people for your problems. But Jonah shows us, he says, no, I got to acknowledge when I'm the problem. He says, the reason this is happening is because I'm running from God. And here's what God says. Whenever you can get to the point of acknowledging when you're the problem, God says, now I know you're rescue ready. If you're still blaming somebody for where you are, if you're still pointing the finger at somebody, there's an indicator that God did not get the message to you that the storm was designed to bring you. But when you can acknowledge when I'm the problem, God says, now I know you're rescue ready. Are we almost there. Let me move. Let me move. Let me move. God says, I know when you're rescue ready, number one, when you can acknowledge when you're the problem. But secondly, God says, I know when you're rescue ready, when you can honestly reassess your priorities. Look at, go back up to verse number four, chapter one, verse four. Just go back up. Look what the Bible says. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners... <laughs> were afraid, cried unto to, to every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten them. Now, let me, let me paint the picture for you. So now, they launch out from the land, get into the middle of the sea, encounter a storm, and start throwing stuff away. All right, I'm gonna stop, rewind, play. Here, they leave the land with stuff they think they need for the journey. But when they get in the middle of the sea in the storm, they reassess their stuff and start throwing stuff away. Because at some point, what good is a toaster in a storm? What good is a Louis Vuitton bag if we're going to die at sea? What good is this credit card with this high limit if we won't make it to the other side? All, all it is now is just dead weight. They start throwing stuff overboard. I want you to see the picture. I want you to see the picture. Text said, verse 5, they begin to cast forth the wares that were in the ship to lighten it of them. Now, now here's what I want you to see. That when they are on the shore, 
Everything that they packed to bring with them, they thought it was necessary. But when the storm hit, they started discarding stuff that they originally thought they needed. When they were on the shore, I needed this. But when they got in the storm, this is unnecessary. Listen, listen, listen. It's the same stuff. Different season, and there was a different assessment. On the shore, I need it. But in the storm, it's unnecessary. And that's because storms have a way of redefining for us what's necessary. Let me bring it closer. If I got $5,000 in my pocket, and the new Jordans come out, I might say, I need those. Yeah, I need, I need those. A new bag come out, you say, this is going to match everything I have. I need that bag. I need those. I got $5,000. These joys only come out once a year. I need those. Can I get a witness? But here's what I need you to see. So now you, you need them, quote unquote. You go down there and spend $250 on these joys. $250 on this bag because you needed it. Stay with me. But what if you only have $5 instead of $5,000? The joints can come out. The purse can hit the shelf. But now it goes from a necessity to nice to have. Listen, Lord, I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. And the Lord told me to tell you that at the beginning of the year, there was some stuff you thought you needed. But when I let you go through this storm of 2020, now you don't really sense some stuff. It's just nice to have. There were some people you thought you needed, but no, that was just nice to have. There was some stuff you thought you needed, but no, that's just nice to have because storms help you reassess what's necessary. And God says there was some stuff you weren't going to give up on your own. There was some stuff you weren't going to throw overboard on your own. He says, so I let the storm come and now you reassess. What was necessary? You reassessed what you had to do. You reassessed what you had to have and what you had to keep. Because storms help you reassess properly. God told me to tell you, he said, I tried to show you this year. There were some, some things that you thought you had to have. He says, but now you've put them into the category, category of nice to have. I got to get out of here. I've been up here too long. God says, I know you're rescue ready. He says, when you're willing to acknowledge when you're the problem. He says, I know you're rescue ready when you're really willing to reassess your priorities. He says, but here's the last thing that shows me that you're ready to be rescued. He says, when you start properly aiming your prayers. Look at chapter 2, verse 1. It says, it's right there in the verse now. Then Jonah prayed. <laughs> Lord have mercy. See, it's really funny when you go back. See, this, when it ain't you, it's really funny. But when you look at the text and you go back to read chapter 1 all the way to verse 1 of chapter 2, you see everything that happened, this boy done got swallowed. <laughs> he, he's in the pit. He's, he's in the dungeon. The text says that he's in the depths of hell in the belly of the fish. But when you get to verse, two, verse 1 of chapter 2, the Bible says, then, Lord have mercy, <laughs> Jonah prayed, but who he prayed to? Unto the Lord his God out of the belly of the fish. Now, 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 because we are good Christians, yeah, we, we say, yeah, prayer changes things, and it does. But even though prayer changes things, the first thing that prayer is designed to change is you. So when you're praying for God to change it, God says, I'll change it after you change. Lord, I just, I just need to help somebody who's waiting on God to do something. And God said, I ain't, you're not waiting on me. God says, I'm waiting on you. Come on here, somebody. L look what the Bible says. It says, then Jonah prayed, which suggests to us that before Jonah got in the belly of the whale, he didn't pray. We're going to use deductive reason here. Then Jonah prayed. Because before he got in the belly of the fish, Jonah did not pray. You need Bible? Go back and look at chapter 1. You read all the way through it. You'll find out in verse 2 of chapter 1, God tells Jonah, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. And verse 3 says, but Jonah rose up and fled to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. Nowhere in there, when God gives him instruction, 
Does Jonah ask any questions about what I need to do? How, how do I get there, Lord? Whatever you say, Lord, use me as you please. Send me, Lord, I go. All this stuff we say. But when God said, go down to Nineveh, he said, no, I ain't going. And so he gets on a ship on his way down to Joppa. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. But he never prays to God. Now, here's why he don't pray to God. I thank you for this interjection, Holy Ghost. Here's why he don't pray to God. Because Jonah is upset with God. Because the Ninevites are the arch enemies of the Israelites. And so he wants God to kill them. So he said, if I don't go down there and preach, they'll die. He said, because if I go preach to them, they're going to hear this gospel. They're going to believe and be converted. And if they convert it, you're going to save them like you saved me. Come on, somebody. He said, but if I don't go preach, you will kill them all. And so when God says go to Nineveh and preach, he did not want to go because he thought he was going to fail. He didn't want to go because he thought he was going to succeed. Lord have mercy. He didn't go, wanna, not want to go because he thought it wasn't going to work. He didn't want to go because he knew it would work. And I'm talking to somebody who's waiting on doing what God told you. You're really not afraid that it won't work. You're just afraid that it will. Yeah, because you know when it works, when, you, when he calls you and he swings open one door and you walk through the door, guess what's going to happen? That's going to be another door. And when it keeps working and working, you try to talk yourself out of it. But God says you're not afraid of it not working. You're afraid of it working because I am the one who's carried you all of this way. So he doesn't pray to God, y'all, because he's mad. He's angry. And he does what we do sometimes. God says, you didn't do what I wanted you to do. I'm going to shut up on you. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to pray. I ain't going to worship. I ain't going to give. I'm not coming. Don't call me. I'm not going to be loving the other people. I'm going to tear up for when they come to me with stuff that they, I'm, I'm going I'm to let them have it. When they trespass against me, I'm going to let them know right there. Wherever they trespass is where they're going to get it. All that kind of stuff because you're angry with God. And there are people even now in churches that damage new converts because you mad at God. They didn't do it. Because, Lord, I, I wanted you to do this for me, Lord. I thought I ought to be here by now. Then you see God using somebody, and now you get frustrated. But that's another sermon for another day. Uh-huh. But he says, I'm not going to say nothing because he's angry with God. But when he gets in the belly of the fish, <laughs> Jonah starts talking. Because when he hears God, he said, I ain't going to pray. I'm just going to run. But when he got in the fish, he stopped playing. <laughs> and he started praying. I, I remember this man told me, t told me the story. I never forgot it. He said there was a, story, there was a, a, a team, a high school team. He said it was, a, it was the rivalry between two city schools. And he said, everybody in this town loved football. And so they would come to these games every weekend. But now, this was the big game one time a year. And everybody from the city would gather to come to this game once a year. He said, everybody had bought their tickets. They got their paraphernalia on. They ready for the game. But a tornado hit the town. And when a tornado came through, y'all, it tore up the stadium. It tore up City Hall. It tore up all of the, the, the trailer parks, the parks. It tore up houses everywhere. And the next day, y'all, listen, there was a headline in the newspaper. And the headline, top of the headline in the, in the daily newspaper said this, storm stop games. Here's what I'm trying to tell somebody. That whenever a real storm comes in your life, you will stop playing. Whenever a real storm hits your house, you will stop playing and start praying. And can I tell you that right now, America is praying and they don't stop playing. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of here. I'm already in trouble. Jonah, Jonah is in the belly of the fish. But here's what I want to show you. We would look at Jonah in the belly of the fish and say Jonah is stuck. Because <laughs> he can't move. He, he's, he, he's in one spot and he's balled up. He can't move because this is not designed to be a luxury hotel. <laughs> this is a holding cage. It's not designed to be luxurious. Come on somebody. And so here he is in a tight place. <laughs> it's dark in there. He can't see nothing because he's in the belly of the fish. Ain't no, ain't no uh, hole at the top of him to look at. Ain't no, ain't no sunlight and no, and no fish. He's in the belly of the fish, but he's not stuck, y'all. He's just still. Uh, because when, when we look at the verse, we see that when God spoke the first time, Jonah ran. But this time, God says, I'm going to make sure you ain't going to run. He says, because when you're in the belly of this fish, 
He says you're going to have to sit still and listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Because when he's in the bed of the fish, he's finally still enough to listen to what God has to tell him. And it's in the belly of the fish that God gives Jonah instructions for what to do next. And as soon as Jonah gets in the belly of the fish, look at the verse. The text says he starts praying unto God. And by the time we get to verse number 10 in chapter 2, because all the way from verse 1 in chapter 2 to verse 10, God, Jonah is talking to the Lord. And when we get to verse 10, God says, all right, I got you. He tells the, he tells the fish, go spit Jonah up. And so the fish finally goes to where he needs to be, and he spits Jonah up on the dry land. Here's, here's what I'm trying to tell you. God says, I know everybody want to be rescued. He said, but the question is, are you rescue ready? Are you ready for me to come through? Have you gotten out of this? What you're supposed to get out of this? And I'm going to leave this with you. That God told me to tell somebody that you are not stuck. You are just still. But God wants to know, are you rescue ready? And here's my prayer today, that somebody listening to me. That means that the Lord has brought you all the way through 2020. He's brought you all the way to the last Sunday in 2020 in preparation for 2021. And nothing is promised. We don't know what's going to happen in these next few days. We're believing and trusting God that he'll get us over to the other side. But all of us have some things in our lives. We say, Lord, I'm tired of this. I'm ready to be out of this. I'm, stop, I'm ready to stop dealing with this. But God says, I know you want to be rescued. But my question to you is, are you rescue ready? And my prayer today is that someone who does not know Jesus would accept Christ today. I can tell you this, that Jesus came and he died on Calvary's cross to rescue you and I from the damnation of sin, from eternal death. He came to rescue us. And my question to you today is, are you rescue ready? Are you ready for your life to change? Are you ready to stop living by your own devices? Are you ready to start over? Are you ready to accept Jesus Christ into your heart today to make him your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so today, I pray that if you want to give your life to the Lord, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But I ask you right now, God, to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came he lived, he died, and he rose again with all power in his hands. And by believing in him, I have a right to the tree of life. So Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart, to be my Lord and my Savior, and I will be your child. And I receive you right now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, right now, you are saved. You are the righteousness of God. And every sin that you have ever committed has been cast into the sea of forgiveness, never to be remembered anymore. You are now a new creature, and you are brand new in Christ Jesus. If you prayed that prayer and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want you to use that link. Click to connect. Join and connect with us. We want to help you reach your goals in God. If the Lord is impressed upon your heart that you should be a member of the Main Street Church of God in Christ, use that same link. Click to connect. Join with us. We want to help you find your place and your position here in our family. We want to be your church family, and I want to be your pastor. If you want to sow seed into ministry today, use that link. Click to give, and you'll be able to sow seed directly into the ministry of the Main Street Church of God in Christ. If you want to use Cash App, use the cash tag Main Street C-O-G-I-C. And when you see our logo in the, in the top left-hand corner, you know that you are in the right place. Sow seed into ministry today. And I just want you to take this with you, that whatever you're in, I know you want to come out, but God wants to know, are you rescue ready? May God cover you and keep you until we meet again. God bless you.